I almost missed my cue. <clears throat> We'd like to welcome everyone here to First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ today. Thank you for worshiping with us. If you are a visitor for the first time, or if you're worshiping from home, thank you. It is good to see everyone today. As you see by your bulletin, that uh, Z the Reverend Marshall is, or Zena is going to be uh, sharing the message today. Reverend Ellis and Sabrina is probably traveling back from Colorado. Uh, they went there for the memorial service for the death of uh, her father. So let's keep them in our prayers. This is the day the Lord created, and let us rejoice. We're about to pass the peace. Now, I have to remind everybody, <clears throat> when the music stops, Brad, <laughs> make sure you're back in your seats. Let us stand and pass the peace. I would like to thank everyone for promptly being back in your seats. <laughs> Let us now stand and sing our opening hymn, which is found on page 537 in your hymnals, My Hope is Built.
righty, let's go to uh, announcements, concerns, and celebrations. Anybody have any joys or concerns or anything they'd like to share? Mike does. I've got one. Alabama's senior is going to be 87 tomorrow. 87. <laughs> Happy birthday. Anybody else? Yes, Tim. Whoa. Tim's uh, granddaughter will be 17 tomorrow. Mike, did you have something? He has a new great niece. Oh, my, 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 my niece had a baby girl. Mike's uh, niece had a baby girl. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. She was part of this conversation, we this conversation. Oh, okay. All righty. <laughs> now 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 I, I comprehend now. <laughs> Anything else? Brad, our, our prayers are with you and your family. All righty, let's turn to the back of the, if there's no others, let's turn to the back of the bulletin and, and look at uh, what's coming up in the life of the church. And it looks like uh, we're going to be pretty active. Uh, this week we got uh, blankets of love. You can uh, sign up here in the North X after, after church today and uh, there is a DWF board meeting on Tuesday at uh, 10 a.m. And then also Tuesday, lunch brunch is going to be at Fried Rice 2 on Townsend Avenue. Also at Tuesday, uh, 4.15 is choir rehearsal. And looks like now we have a Bible study class that is uh, at 7 a.m. here at the church. Is that downstairs or? Okay, downstairs there. And then the crazy, crazy crafters are going to meet uh, Thursday. Okay. Looking ahead on uh, February the 11th, Lincoln's Love is going to be out there again uh, uh, signing up. You know, you can send a blanket. And also, too, after worship next Sunday, uh, the youth... And membership department, mainly membership department, we're going to do a spaghetti luncheon for Valentine's Day, okay? Uh, we're also going to have a photographer to take pictures. So uh, it's going to be a, a really a good event. Please plan on staying afterwards. Disciples Bell Rehearsal uh, is going to be right after the lunch. And I believe there's a cabinet meeting that day also. Man, we're going to be busy. Uh, Old Campus, they're going to serve on the uh, Tuesday, the 13th. Is that right? Monday, okay. The 12th, Monday the 12th. And then uh, the DWF groups are going to meet. Uh, group 4 at 1030. 10 o'clock, not 1030. Okay, 10 o'clock at the parlor. <laughs> and then... Uh, 
DWF Group 3 is going to uh, go out and party at Los Americas, okay, at 6 p.m. All righty. <laughs> All righty, prayer concerns. <clears throat> uh, we were just informed that uh, Steve Riggs is going to be having upcoming surgery, so please uh, keep the Riggs family in the prayers. Uh, Alan Maxey uh, is, of course, he is on hospice care. Uh, he is at home, and the outcome does not look very good for poor Alan. So uh, Marilyn has asked for our prayers, and she also asked if uh, uh, we could uh, maybe provide some meals for them. Uh, I think uh, whoever coordinates that here at the church he said there's five people that's eating. Uh, Sabrina Robinson and family, you know, with the loss of uh, her dad, D.C. Smith. Brad and Kidder and his family with the loss of his mother, Brooksine. And let's keep Jack and Joy in, uh, in your prayers. Uh, for, I think he had surgery. Also, too, Margot received a, uh, a phone call last night from Ashley. Uh, uh, she is, I think, now in Tennessee, and she asked the church uh, for her prayers. Is there any others? Thank you. I turned that off earlier because it was loud, and now hopefully you all can hear me. Um, there is uh, one other addition to the uh, uh, list of things that we'll be doing in the next couple of weeks. Um, there will be an Ash Wednesday service at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, February the 14th. And so just put that in the back of your mind. Um, it is amazing how the year is just skating past us already. It's already time for, um, for Lent and, uh, and, and running upon the Easter season. Won't you stand with me for the call to worship? Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watching. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest. Please allow me to include uh, Sister Macrina Wiedeker's prayer for a questioning heart for the beginning of our invocation, or beginning of our pastoral prayer. Let's pray. It seems to me, Lord, that we search much too desperately for answers when a good question holds as much grace as an answer. Jesus, you are the great questioner. Keep our questions alive, that we may always be seekers rather than settlers. Guard us well from the sin of settling in with our answers, hugged to our breasts. Make of us a wondering, far-sighted, questioning, restless people, and give us the feet of pilgrims on this journey unfinished. Gracious God, we stand in the light of your presence, asking for your blessing and your, your guard, your um, conviction to, uh, to our blessing. We pray for Steve and Labeth as they uh, come to a place that they have not seen before. We pray for Alan Maxey and the Maxey family as he is cared for in these, uh, in these days ahead. We pray for Ellis and Sabrina as they travel home and their family as they remember the death of their father, D.C. Smith. And we pray for the Kidder family on the loss of his mother, uh, on the loss of Brad's mom, Brooksine. We keep Jack and Joy in our prayers and we pray for new babies and for the unspoken needs. Gracious God, we look to you as we begin this worship together, and we pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, 
our Father. Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. You can find that on page 813 of your pew Bibles. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the, ga the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout all Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Mary Beth, thank you for always settling our hearts at this time in the service and for energizing our hearts in the rest of the, in the, at the rest of the time. Um, we thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I'm not Ellis, um, but it's my privilege. I'm Zena Marshall. It's my privilege to stand in for him as he and Sabrina dra uh, travel back from Denver. Um, imagine with me the last time that you extended your hand to a spouse, a, charent, a child, a parent, a friend, an acquaintance or a stranger to help them up from a chair or from the floor. I'm not talking about an extreme or an emergency circumstance, but a circumstance that just required a little balance, an automatic response. When you see that someone needs an anchor point so that they can lift themselves up to do whatever they need to do. Take a moment, feel it, see it. Unless you want to be pulled over, your hand is not pointing down, okay? It's pointing up so that, when, so that your whole self can provide the necessary foundation for that lift. Your grip is intentional and the thumb strong it looks a lot like the greeting class that says, brother, I'm with you. Someone my height might also have to set my feet a little wider to be the best balance and support. There's some involuntary preparation that has to happen in the seconds before the lift. And I think about it, now think about it, success depends on the one giving and the one receiving. The one providing the lift can be as willing as you would like to be, but if the person who needs the steady hand is not ready or able, well, you know what can happen. You've seen it. You get the little dance that can happen when everyone is slightly off balance, or you get the full-on tumble. Well, before a close read, I once let pop culture images influence the way that I saw the majority of the miracle stories. You know, a Hollywood-like movie scene depicting a sparklingly clean Jesus who dramatically restored health to often identity-less caricatures. I picked a couple of really tough words there. Sorry about that. Our text, though, um, plainly indicates a much simpler scene with far greater possibility. An extended hand is accepted by another. It's all in the lift. Like many gospel stories, Mark 1, 29 through 39 gives us a postage stamp outline for our response to the word. Collectively, these verses give us a snapshot of what our ministry should and does look like in many ways. In this, we see the emerging church model of shared purpose and resources. Fun fact, scholarship tells us that the original version of this cluster of stories likely, is likely the founding story of the church in Capernaum. We can see prayer as an important opportunity for renewal, renewal and self-care. And we can also see a necessity to follow God's call beyond our own limitations. This story, however, is anchored by an authentic response to serve by a woman whose name is unknown. Scholarship calls it unpreserved. As I read it, I see a mob of men squeezing into a small dwelling, ready to rest and eat after a long day's work. Simon's mother-in-law is not well and will struggle to be who she is called to be in that moment and in their world. She has one role, and that is to ensure that Jesus and the disciples have what they need to make the greatest impact in their community. How can she do this with the illness that she is experiencing? Now, you can insert your own vision of what that illness may be, 
But Jesus sees the problem, and with a balanced and steady hand, he lifts her up. He restores her health and her ability to serve. Scholarship tells us that the word for lift is the same Greek word used when God raises Jesus from the dead. Similarly, the word for serve is the same one that is used when angels minister to Jesus. And suddenly, we can see how the miracle is equally as dependent on the unnamed woman's acceptance of Jesus. Their exchange is reciprocal. She chooses to rise up. She chooses to be restored to ministry and service. She also <coughs> chooses to accept the mystery of a new life on the other side of recovery. We discover her place in God's world, then we can begin to find our own. This woman gets three sentences, but it's a power-packed three sentences. One, responsibility. Minister to, care for Jesus. Sounds pretty mundane until you think about all those people at the door. And remember, we the readers are the only ones who know who Jesus really is. So a miracle occurs. Where does Jesus find strength and nourishment for the days ahead? But from the miracle itself, she ministers. We can see the remaining elements of this scripture and others empowered by her restoration. We can experience this same lift in our relationship to another and to others in our world. The story continues. The hard work of preaching good news for God, good news of God's love for all, and the healing begins. Mark is known to exaggerate for effect, so the story tells us the whole city of people are hungry for this kind of hope and this kind of grace. There's a whole lot of work to be done. The work is exhausting. By his model, over and over again in the scripture, Jesus must step away for just a little while to recharge and to reconnect with God. Prayer is a necessity. We must remember to do the same individually and as this collection of people, this unique reflection of the Christ. There's a caution here as well. Like many gospel stories, we see disciples and the people beginning to take Jesus and his miracles for granted. They just want more. But instead of allowing them to contain and consume the power of the word for themselves in that small community, Jesus expands the scope of his mission taking disciples a lot further than they expected, very likely far, a bit farther than they want to go. They did. And I think that we can say that they weren't necessarily brave. They didn't really know who he was. But we do. Are we brave enough to be better, to offer an authentic response to this invitation to serve? In our small slice of the world, I think we get bogged down by the very human question, does what we are doing matter, even when the work appears to be impossible? The answer, of course, is an unequivocal, of course it does. We have one responsibility, and that is to be a reflection of God's abiding hope and love in a broken and often humiliating world. Take a moment to remember who has extended that steadying hand to you. Thank God for that relationship and for that action that reflects the divine call. Now, where have you extended that steadying hand? Don't be shy. You have.
Now, thank God for you. If we ask, will the world remember? I think the answer would be likely not, especially after a couple of centuries, probably not even after a couple of decades. But wouldn't it be great if we got three power pack sentences? Because even in spite of our humanness, we choose to respond. We choose to accept the steady hand and the balancing lift. And in doing so, we can now extend it. Thanks be to God, and amen. At First Christian Church, we put the communion table at the center of our worship. On this beautiful table, a sacramental meal is placed. All are invited to come and eat. When you come, please come down through the outer aisles and return down through the center. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Come, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come because of his mercy and the love of Jesus Christ. Come because he loves and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ. Today, when we come down to take the communion. If you have something that you would like to leave to Christ to take care of, just take your hand and place it on the table. And he will take that away from you. Jesus took the bread and broke it, saying, 
This is my body broken for you. Go on doing this to recall my presence with you. You shall eat bread and you shall praise the Lord your God. He took the cup saying, this means new relationship. Established by the shedding of my blood, go on doing this whenever you drink it to recall my presence with you. So he lets his glory be seen, seen among us, and we believe and share in his undying life. Won't you please come? Let us pray. Father, we praise and thank you for the, for the love you've shown us 
in Jesus Christ. We thank you for his teachings, his lifting us up when we are down. He heals the sick, feeds the hungry, and loves the loveless. We thank you for his sacrificial death upon the cross, for the redemption of the world. We give thanks for the bread and wine, symbols of his body and blood that redeemed us. Father, renew us in his likeness, that we may be an instrument to serve and share his word throughout the world. Amen. come to a point in our service each week where we uh, offer uh, to those who may have decided that this is a place for them, won't you come join us uh, at, uh, it, during this time, during the invitation hymn. I uh, really like what uh, Ellis always says at the end of the service, and he says, if, if we didn't get it right this time, come back next week and, and we'll see if we can do better. So... Um, at this time, let's sing and, uh, and, and thank God again for our opportunity to serve.
Allen, it was so enthusiastic just a moment ago, I have to say happy birthday again, but to also uh, say that uh, Mike announced that Megan has had a baby this week, but uh, uh, Tori uh, Tester, Tori Davenport, has also had a baby this week, so uh, we can celebrate, celebrate new life um, and, and a little seasoned life there too. So, um, people of God, hear this benediction. O oh God, the source of eternal life, shed forth your unending day upon all of us who watch for you, that our lips may praise you, that our lives may bless you, and our worship may give you glory. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.